Hello and welcome back everyone to our nine month ultimate world cruise adventure. And today we're going to show you the quaint and beautiful port of Curacao. Welcome to Living Phase Two. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Nancy, and we're empty nesters striving to live life to the fullest. And we're living that life on Royal Caribbean's nine-month ultimate world cruise. Oh, serenade of the seas. Yeah, so thank you for joining us again. Today we're in the beautiful Dutch port of Curaçao. And uh, kind of give you a little spoiler alert, we love this port. We really did. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, one we would come back to. Yes, so. yes. So what we did is we booked a tour, um, not through the cruise line, but we did book it through Shore Excursions Group. Um, we're not sponsored by them or anything, but we use them for quite a bit of our tours. And it's real nice because you can have a different variety of tours. And to be honest, you can really save some money by by using them. That's right. Mm -hmm. So when you use um, an outside tour, you can't meet just right there at the port. You have to meet at somewhere outside of mm -hmm. the port gates. And uh, they had us meet at the Marriott. They gave very good directions mm -hmm. and it was only a couple blocks away. So a very easy walk. Mm -hmm. And that is where we then met the bus driver, yeah. the tour driver. And the nice thing about the Marriott is they, they were really used to this. Yes. Um, extremely accommodating. They weren't, oh, what are you doing meeting a tour here? This is just for guests. And no, they were wonderful. In fact, they were, would you like some water while you're waiting? <laughs> and in fact, the tour guide even called and he came to us and said, oh, you're waiting for a tour. He's going to be like two minutes. He's you know away. He'll be right here. So they were wonderful. At the Marriott. Oh yes. yeah, just extremely friendly. And uh, once our tour guide arrived, we boarded uh, the bus. We had a very small group, seven, correct? We had seven it people. It was a small group. Yeah, so. which was wonderful because that gave us a lot of opportunity to see a lot of things, mm -hmm. to ask questions, to do things that you don't necessarily get when you have a, a bus of 55 people or something. So we, that was a nice surprise. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the first things that we saw on the tour was the swinging bridge. It's named uh, Queen Juliana. Mm -hmm. um, named after, uh, I guess, one of the Dutch mm -hmm. queens, uh -huh. maybe from yeah. the Netherlands. Yes. And uh, the reason it's a swinging bridge, it, it's, a, it's a pedestrian, floating it's a mm -hmm. floating bridge, you walk across it, cars don't drive across uh -huh. it, um, but, but it swings open and closed, so instead of it being a drawbridge that would go up and down, it swings to the side mm -hmm. and back to uh, let the other boats go through. Right, right, and so we're gonna show you in a little bit later. Um, we drove by it, but then later we actually went on a walk. After our tour, we crossed the bridge. We'll show you that, but it's a floating mm -hmm. bridge and, and it moves. It does. <laughs> it does. So right as we were passing uh, the floating bridge, we could also see their beautiful suspension bridge, which um, we had a very nice view of that. We're gonna cross that bridge in just a minute. We're gonna tell you a little bit of a tragic story that happened there um, that's very unfortunate. But we swung around and um, from those beautiful views and went into an older neighborhood in Curacao. And this particular neighborhood was one that, uh, as our guide said, uh, you know, a few years ago, you would not have gone into. It was, uh, um, you know, kind of a dangerous place. It was very um, downtrodden. Um, you know, the, the houses were falling apart. And, uh, and so they worked very hard to try to find different ways to revitalize this area. Now, the first was a hotel. It was. Well, it was a hotel that, that failed. Yeah. Um, and, and the reason that it failed is because here, Curacao has this beautiful island with beautiful beaches, and the hotel was nowhere near a beach. It was in, kind of in the middle of town. Yeah. yeah so, so that, so didn't that work. failed. <laughs> um, so, once again, it is now being revitalized with little boutique shops, restaurants, bars, and the name of this little little area is Hulanda Village or little yeah. neighborhood here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, it's you can see us charming. walking through. Oh, yeah. It's, it's beautiful. You can see us walking through here. It, it looks a little abandoned because we were there very early on a Sunday morning. Right. So, um, they had just had their Saturday night. All the bars and restaurants were packed. Nobody's back out on the street at this point. Um, so we kind of had it to ourselves. And, uh, you know, there's good and bad about that, right? We can walk around, take all the pictures we want, see everything without the crowds. Um, but then also you can't really get the full feel when the streets are full of people and the bars and restaurants are going. But, yes. So you'll see quite a bit on, as you're seeing our video today, uh, because it's a Sunday, a lot of things were closed, which was okay because we were more interested in seeing some of the, the beauty and the nature of Curacao. So that really didn't bother us too much. Right, so then as our tour driver drove us around, one of the things that you see so much of are the brightly colored houses. And they're, again, charming. That's a word I'll probably use yeah. way too much during yeah. this video, but yeah. they really so are. So every, everyone take a drink when she says charming. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, they, they used to all be point, point, painted yeah. white. Um, but as the story goes, there was an old governor in the past who had developed an eye infection. And because of his eye inf infection, he'd go outside. It's, like, it's too bright. The houses are too, too white. I decree there could be no more white houses. And so everyone had to then paint their house in color that was a more expensive paint however yeah it happens to be that this and by the way he was quite the drinker too yes he was. so <laughs> the uh, it happened to be that it was found out later that he did own quite a bit of stock in the paint company yes. <laughs> so, so decreeing that everyone couldn't use the less the least expensive white paint and had to use the expensive uh, pigmented paint the mm -hmm. colored paint um, it made him quite a bit of money and so that this is a legend you know I mean these are the fun things you hear when you go with a good tour guide and so so the reason that we have beautiful Curacao today is a drunk one-eyed governor um, <laughs> who was embezzling money from a paint company. Yeah, no, it's all right. yeah, no, it's, it, it was, those are the stories I love. Yeah. yeah. The mm -hmm. other thing that you will see a lot of on the homes are, are beautiful murals painted on one side of the home. And the colorful paint is more expensive than white paint. And some, some people just cannot afford the paint. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of local artists who will volunteer to paint homes of those who can't afford it. And in doing so, they take one of their walls and they paint it into a beautiful mural. Mm -hmm. But then they also paint the remaining sides of the homes. Mm -hmm. Now let's backtrack just a little bit. The, re the homes are painted every four to five years. And the reason for that is the walls develop what they call a wall cancer. Right. And it's because they use salt water in the mixing of the, the stuc stucco and the, the concrete, mortar, right? concrete. So, so anybody that yeah. does home improvement or works with concrete or works anywhere in Maine, scenario if you hear that use salt water you're probably cringing right now so and what that means is the salt crystals so you need to use pure clean water when you make concrete if you use salt water the salt is in there and it acts like the same thing in the northern uh, United States or different areas when water freezes and thaws and freezes and thaws the salt does the same thing when the water hits the walls the salt it absorbs dries. it then it dries then it absorbs it and dries and it effectively just chips away and causes the walls to decay cancer in it they call it wall cancer well you prevent that by sealing the walls and don't ever let uh, the water get into them and that's why they have to be extremely diligent about painting these houses in Curacao because all of these old houses were made with the seawater mortar and if they don't then they start to fall apart get dilapidated and then that just leads to the neighborhoods getting dilapidated so yeah but as you were saying this uh, these artists come in yeah, and then they'll have a festival once a year they kind of close the town down People will walk around the town and admire the artist's work um, on, on all these homes that they've done the beautiful murals on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that what a great way to revitalize some neighborhoods. If mm -hmm. you have neighborhoods where maybe people can't, where they want to keep their house up but can't afford it, what a great thing to bring in artists to to help really beautify the neighborhoods. And it brings tourism, it brings people into those neighborhoods. So no, it, it was, I, well, I just think it's fascinating that they're doing everything they can to keep up their neighborhoods. It was charming. Yes, it was charming. <laughs> there you go. Charming alert number two, right? <laughs> so the next thing we did is we did then drive across. So let's tell you a little bit about this bridge as you see us driving across it here. You get a beautiful view from the top of it. Unfortunately, back in 1972, they originally built a stone bridge, not a steel bridge that you see here. And uh, guess what they used to mix their mortar with? Salt, salt water. water. <laughs> you think after 300 <laughs> years of knowing about wall cancer and not mixing mortar with salt water, they'd know that. Well, they didn't learn from the past, and the bridge, real, right as they opened it, collapsed. Um, all the mortar wasn't sturdy, and unfortunately, 15 people actually died. Uh, they immediately closed the bridge tore it completely down and then rebuilt it using a steel structure um, that you see today. So it is a beautiful bridge but it does have a bit of a morbid history and uh, this is one of those cases of we really need to learn from the past yes. and they didn't seem to do that when they built the when they built the Queen Emma Bridge. So, um, But yeah we got over the Queen Emma Bridge and we went to a fort which was kind of cool to see. It was up on top of a high hill uh -huh. able to overlook the island. We got some beautiful pictures there there's a beautiful picture just happened that our ship was framed in a in an arching doorway I thought yeah. it was just just stunning yeah yeah beautiful views of the whole city there 
Following the fort, uh, we now drove downtown and we saw some really interesting things there. One of the things we saw were stair step houses that were built on a hillside. And mm -hmm. so every house was a stair step lower, all painted different colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, charming. Yes. It, it really was. That's so. right. So then uh, we drove around. We stopped at the main town square, and there's a very famous sign there. It's a little bit like the if you watched our last video on Aruba. All these uh, towns seem to have be very proud of their names. So there is a giant Curacao sign uh, you can see here. And then along with the Curacao sign is a very famous sign downtown. It says Dushi, which actually they're supposed to go together. You say Dushi Curacao. And uh, in Dutch, or in the the language they use there in um, Curacao, douche means good. good. It's not a bad thing. Beautiful, right. wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's a good yeah. thing. You'd say, oh, this this uh, meal is very douchey, you know, and that means it's very good. So douchey Curacao, we got the <laughs> got a little snap of that, and then we swung around and drove by a floating. Um, uh, market. Right. Yeah. So boats will bring um, produce in from Venezuela uh, by boat because the island just doesn't have enough resources mm -hmm. to uh, produce all of their own fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. They bring them in on boat and then right along the riverfront are all these little market stalls. Uh -huh. Now a few of them were open today on a Sunday, but during the week it is uh -huh. a bustling place. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the boats just unload to the market stalls mm -hmm. and, and people will and float behind and yeah. float behind and then people will drive in front of the market stalls. Some will get out and get their, their fruits and produce. Others will just yell through the car window yeah. what they want and they'll bring it to them. Right, right. So they come, uh, the boats normally come, I believe he said on, on Monday, mm -hmm. and they stay all week and then Friday they return to Venezuela and then they reload, they restock and then they come back the next uh, Sunday to Monday. So it's uh, it's been going on for years and years and years and as Nancy said, an island like Curacao cannot produce all its own produce because they just don't have the farmland, the, the land and ground is not really designed for that. And this is a great way that uh, working with Venezuela they've been able to have the farmers come over. Right. Mm -hmm. And from there we went to see the salt flats. Yes. So years ago, yeah. how, how long ago was it? Oh, so back um, a couple centuries ago, uh, Curacao was a huge area for the production of salt, mm -hmm. and they had these natural low salt basins that uh, they could, uh, they built a dam, they would let the salt water in and then close off the dam, the water would dry, and then they would go out and pick up the salt. Unfortunately, that was um, slave labor. Um, very sad history there. And uh, in modern times now, they're not, Curacao is not, uh, is no longer really used as a um, major salt production. Um, you actually, spoiler alert, will see that on Bonaire coming up. They still do a lot of salt production there. But what the nice thing about these fields is with the, um, the ocean can now naturally come into these salt fields and it's full of these bright uh, uh, salt shrimp and the flamingos are everywhere that eat the shrimp. That's the first time I've seen flamingos in the wild and it was mm -hmm. It was really cool. Uh -huh. we, we saw hundreds of flamingos. Yeah, so. so that was a nice stop and we could see those old salt flats. And then from there, um, we stopped in, or not really stopped, but we drove through Willywood. <laughs> <laughs> Willywood is a spinoff of Hollywood. Yeah. It was one of those neighborhoods that was really declining and uh, they, I guess it was someone's name that originally. Yeah, it was just kind of a joke, really. They, yeah. yeah, they made it into a joke and, uh -huh. and uh, put up. They put up a big sign that lights up at night, uh -huh. and then that started attracting the tourists. Uh -huh. And so then that allowed bars, restaurants, yeah. to, and even the local little shops to mm -hmm. to develop and start thriving and so now it's it's a it's a bustling little uh, neighborhood. Yeah, you can come and have a meal in Willywood and and for some reason I don't know why but there's the famous goat barbecue. You can see the goat barbecue here but it's a uh, shaped like a goat. Do you think they barbecue goat? I think they have quite a bit of goat on the uh, island. <laughs> there's so a lot of wild goats. Yeah, there's a lot of wild goats there. So that was that was Willywood. We didn't try the wild goat. No. <laughs> but we did have lunch uh -huh. at a local restaurant. That was, mm -hmm. uh, we were sitting outside, and um, that, that was a nice It was nice. We were the only ones community. there. Yeah. Um, way out in the country. I had a sandwich, a salad. Um, great owner. Um, so, yeah, we stopped for a kind of a light um, sandwich there. French fries. I yeah, think. and I thought yeah. it was good. Um, that, and then after that, that's when we headed out to the eastern shore of Curacao. Right. So the, so the western side... Um, 
it is blocked by all the wind. So that's yeah. where the beautiful beaches are. Mm -hmm. But on the eastern side, that's where all the winds are, are hitting the island. Mm -hmm. And so you've got this crashing of waves that, are, that occurs. It's really um, almost mesmerizing mm -hmm. to watch just that. that oh, you can sit all day and crash watch it. of waves. Mm -hmm. and, and it has created um, a lot of, of caves. And mm -hmm. we, were mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we were able to go into one. It was uh -huh. called... Um, uh, yeah. Chete Boca. Well, that whole um, that whole um, uh, shoreline was Chete Boca. Boca. Yeah, just gorgeous. Um, they have overlooks. They have, and yeah, we, uh, seriously, we could have sat there all day watching the waves crash, and you can mm -hmm. see some of that here. And uh, yeah, that was that was just absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And then after we left Chete Boca, we went to a um, to a local beach, and that literally made my mouth drop. The color of the water. And when we walked um, walked up and to the overlook of that beach, it was like that. That's not even real. That's not a you know your brain almost can't compute it. And I'm sure that the video here is not doing it justice. But the the clearness and the the beauty of that water was was incredible. Yeah. yeah. And the final place that we went to see was the Curacao Distillery. Mm -hmm. So it was a little. There was like a little tiny self-guided museum very small but mainly uh they had some samples mm -hmm. there we got a drink while we were there mm -hmm. um yeah i found out i like curacao yeah oh, yeah the, the liquor it's an Sweet. orange liquor like Sweet. uh yeah, like triple sec or something uh -huh. like that if you've never had it the original obviously is from here now we will say they actually don't even export it anymore um because since you can't copyright or trademark a name that has a location in it which it's called blue curacao um that was kind of a mistake they made and so anybody can produce this you know they can figure out the recipe so all the blue curacao you get in your drinks back in your home country um is not from here it's very rare to actually get any from curacao you almost have to come here to get it um because they use kind of the same recipe but it was very good it was yeah good. but it was the distillery itself yeah, I mean, like she said, it's a little self-guided tour. The bar was really nice. The drinks were very affordable, and they were very good. Mm -hmm. So we had a we had a little toast there. So after the Curacao Distillery, we went back to the ship, and we pretty much immediately turned around from the drop off at the Marriott, and we just went for a walk on our own. But there was, you know, that's what's nice is getting one of these overview tours. Even though the tour was, gosh, five or six hours, mm -hmm. um, we wanted to go back and see some of the places that were within walking distance of the ship. And of course, the first we went to was the uh, floating bridge, and so. We had to go out on that and cross the the wavy, rickety bridge, and and uh, it, that was a lot of fun. And uh, then we walked downtown a little bit, um, just just kind of explored. Um, because it was Sunday, there wasn't a lot of things open, but it was nice to see some of the buildings up close. Um, they had a festival they were getting ready for. So after our walk downtown, we headed back to the ship. And I do want to make note that I felt very comfortable in Curacao. I mean, I think as being a tourist, you should always be on your guard um, and, and use caution. But I, I personally felt very comfortable when we were walking around downtown and in the area. Yeah, I'd agree with you. I think, you know, there's some places you go that you're like, ooh, you know. You don't don't veer from the herd here. Stay, you know. Yeah. And there's other places where we felt very comfortable just walking down streets. Mm -hmm. And and we'll let, we'll let you know um, as we're touring these different places on our nine month world cruise here. Um, exactly, you know, the places we felt more safe and comfortable, and the ones right. that it's like, oh, you better you better stay with a stay with the tour. So, right. and we would like to ask you, as we mentioned, the nine month world cruise. Don't forget, we've got lots and lots of videos, nine months worth, mm -hmm. coming out. So be sure to uh, subscribe, hit the like button. And if you like this video and turn on notifications and then every time we put out a video um, you'll get a little note on your YouTube that'll say hey Mike and Nancy have a new video out so we appreciate it. Once we got back to the ship we got cleaned up went to dinner and then we went to see the headliner show which mm -hmm. was an Elton John impersonator his name was or his handle is almost Elton John, mm -hmm. and he was quite good. I mean, just, yeah. he, he, he could be a double. Almost. Yeah, if you like Elton John music, yeah. he does an excellent job. He's got the all the mannerisms and the acting down, so it was really good. And the really costumes, good. the outfits. Oh, yeah. So. yeah, and that and Rose really trying to, I mean, you would think on a nine-month cruise like that, they would be, oh, you know, we'll we'll do entertainment once a week or something. Every night, they're yep. bringing on somebody. Now, is all of it five-star? 
or no, but a lot of it is this very good. This was really good. This was yeah, really good. Enjoyed we enjoyed it. it. So thank you a lot for watching Curacao. Um, tomorrow we are in a beautiful Bonaire, I believe, correct? I believe that is right. Yeah, and so we'll show you that video coming out in a couple days. So we hope that you're enjoying following us around the world. And uh, we actually hope this is very helpful with little tips and tricks, and we appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye, friends. Bye-bye.